let's take it to the next step. This is part two, where we're going to actually learn how to return a value from a function. So it's very simple. We just re replace echo with return, and uh, you spell it right. And what you want to do is you want to get rid of these for now. So now this function simply returns hello world. So what we're going to see is that calling uh, footer will not actually print anything to the screen. And we'll see why in a second. So nothing is printed. Why? Because we haven't, by calling this function, we're not actually telling it to print. All this function does is return the value hello world. It's up to us now to use this value in our PHP pages. Now the simplest thing you can do is go echo footer and hello world appears. What's the difference between just simply printing and returning? Well, besides the fact that you can do all kinds of things with your custom functions, you can create custom functions that validate email addresses, that connect to databases, that draws images to the screen. You can do anything with a custom function. And the return value is very important because that allows you to control what messages, if you will, this custom function gives back to the rest of your PHP script. So for instance, you could have this custom function return a value that's used in another function that does something. So returns are, are pretty fundamental to programming. So it's just, again, these are very basic examples just so that you understand how to return values. We're moving right along now. Let's go to part three, where we're gonna learn how to create a function now. We're gonna add to our function so that it can accept arguments. So let's add our argument. And you simply do that by just putting a variable. So I'm just gonna call it arg, short for arguments, but you might wanna give it a, a real name, like you could put email or whatever you want. You can create multiple arguments by putting a com, a colon, or a colon, comma, and adding uh, different args, args too. So you can do whatever you want, but we're gonna keep it down to one for now. We'll save that. So we have our argument, and let's see what happens when we refresh the page. Missing argument for footer. See, so we've basically said that this function has an argument. We defined it up here but when we're actually using it, we don't give any value for that argument. So that's why PHP is giving us the error code because it expects to see an argument. So how do you add an argument? Well, we'll just add a piece of text. So we're gonna put uh, Stefan. And when we refresh that, there we go, everything works. So one thing I wanna ref uh, mention, let me just remove this argument here. I wanna refresh that page. When you're learning PHP, it's really important that you start getting familiar with error messages because once, because you're gonna get error messages while you're coding in real life and it's very important that you understand what the error messages mean because they can look kind of uh, cryptic at first. So when you're learning, try to pay attention to the error messages, try to understand them and sometimes it's a good idea to break your code on purpose just to see what error messages are produced and this and in time you're going to become more and more familiar with the error messages which will make coding a lot easier so let's go back and we'll add our our value for the argument now if you notice if i refresh this again the function works fine but we're not actually using the argument in our in our code see we have stefan we're, we're basically passing the value of Stefan to the function footer. And when you, let me just uh, back up here, when, you, when you're setting a value for an argument, when you're adding an argument into a function that you're calling, we're calling footer in this case, and we're adding the value of Stefan, we're giving that, we're passing that value. It's like, think about passing the ball or passing the baton. We're passing that value to footer. Now, we've, uh, we said that footer inside of our function will be stuck in it will be placed inside the variable email right by adding the variable like this in between these cur these brackets when we define our function footer we're basically creating this variable email that will be 
usable within the function footer. We'll get back to that a little bit later to clear that up just in case it's not uh, clear to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to go like this and we're going to actually use our our argument in the code. So let's we save that. Let's see what happens. See, hello world Stefan. See, now we're actually using the argument within our PHP function. The next step is to actually add another argument. I'll just call it arg for the sake of speed. And again, if I refresh the page, we're going to get an error because missing argument two, it's saying we're missing the second argument for the function footer. So we have to go back and we have to, again, give a value for arg2. And we'll just go to our PHP because I'm shameless in my promotion. And we'll just refresh that. Hello, everything works. But again, we're not using our second argument inside of our code here. So let's let's do that now. You know what, I'm just going to push this up like this because we don't want more room for you guys to see the actual code window. All right, so let's actually use let's actually use the second argument here inside of our code. And again, I'll just append this like so. Nothing to get excited about. And there it is. What you want to take away from this section is that we could pass arguments into our functions and then use those arguments in our function. We can use them in so many different ways. This is this very basic where we're just returning the values. We could actually do something like this, for instance, just to show you that it doesn't all have to be together. We could uh, we could tell the, the, the script to actually echo out a value. So we're just going to tell it to echo out the value in the second argument. And let's see what happens here. And as we can see, nothing happened. And the reason I did this was to show, to demonstrate another point, is that when you have a function, you can have all kinds of code in your function, right? But when you hit the return, that's when the function stops doing its thing. It's, it's, it basically tells PHP, okay, we've hit our return. This is our return. And we've hit a return statement. All right, function's over. Move on. And that's what happened. It never got to the echo because it got to return first. So we have to put our echo first. And we'll refresh that. And then we're going to see what happens. Okay, it worked. Great. So, hello, PHP. That was our second argument. And then we returned this, right? Is that making sense here? So, again, to take away what you want to take away from this part is that your return statement inside of a function, because you could have tons of code here. You could call other functions. You could call built-in PHP functions, put them in here. You could create a whole set of your own functions and put them in here. And you can have footer call all these functions. But at the end of the day, when the function hits the return statement, that's the end. Anything that comes after that will not be processed by PHP.